Good day my friends, how's things going with you guys? The question today is, is it possible to live in a van and find love? Be in love? Well, watch on and find out. Good day my friends, how's things going? Happy Valentine's Day and welcome back to the Chuck channel, Life of Chuck. And uh, you know what, yeah I should say Valentine's Day, but you know what, by the time you get this video, it's probably going to be a week or two after Valentine's Day, so that wasn't planned out very good, was it? I should have planned it ahead, videoed what I wanted to say, and posted it on Valentine's Day. However, didn't happen. I'll make sure that I didn't lock myself out. Oh, but that's okay. I got a spare key hidden in the van somewhere. Anyhow, Valentine's Day, Valentine's Day. I've got van life and dating today. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do um, a guy's take on van life and dating from my perspective on everything what it hasn't rained for a while so I'm happy we've had a few dry days so I've been able to dry this old girl out and uh, what else do I got yeah I don't really celebrate Valentine's Day Try to see who's here and who's not here in my hood who are my neighbors you never know who your neighbors are every day your neighbors change not like living in a stick and brick you know where your neighbors, if you got bad neighbors, you're stuck with them. But here, hey, if I hate this guy or that guy, I go down the street. Anyhow, I'm getting sidetracked as usual. Uh, Valentine's Day. We don't celebrate it. I don't celebrate it. And you know what? It's all a commercial farce and you're told when to do things at a certain time, just like Christmas and all the other holidays. You gotta celebrate this, celebrate that. So, you know what? I'm not gonna follow the rule of celebrating Valentine's Day. And she said she was okay with that. She does the same thing to her. It doesn't mean much. Um, we do, we'll do a dinner. That's about it. We'll do a dinner tonight. And, uh, you know. But I might do something for her the day after just to show whatever <laughs> that I care because I haven't done much for her in the last little while I mean little little things whatever uh, anyhow van life and dating oh my god that's a big can of worms or a big can of sardines however you look at it uh, it has been an interesting journey in my van life and dating because you know what I didn't want a relationship I was completely happy being in my little cocoon, traveling around, seeing Canada, hopefully seeing the world is what I plan to do, solo traveling so I could mingle a little more rather than having a partner. So that was my plan and that's why I started van life, a simple van life. I just wanted to be on my own after, <coughs> sorry. Uh, failed marriage that I shouldn't have got into but you know what that is life um, my choice at that time I just really didn't want to get into a relationship long term I dated a casually for a couple different girls and I didn't mind that that was okay and I again only one of the girls I wanted to get serious with so I just, yeah, just want to be on my own. I don't want to have whatever, you know what I mean. So, I stumbled upon this, and especially when I came to Vancouver. When I came to Vancouver, I didn't want a relationship. I wanted to focus on a couple things, saving some money. I wanted to go to a lot of the salsa dance nights and uh, mingle with a lot of and get to know people here. And the other one was I really wanted to focus on Tai Chi and Jigong and really heavily get into that. And what happens? In my 
second month of being here, I meet a girl and I start chatting and we start hanging out a lot at the dance community, spending time together, getting to know each other. Then we hung out a couple times out of the dance scene. I think we went on two kind of semi-dates. And one thing led to another and hey, we got feelings for each other. And two years later, here we are in this situation, in a relationship. Uh, has it been easy? Uh, yes, for me it's been probably pretty easy. And that brings up the other aspect. Uh, you know, I probably had a little bit more advantage than other people have because the Salsa Dance Night, you can get 50 to 100 different women there and 50 to 100 different guys there at any given time. So your chances of having a connection and meeting with the opposite sex and sparks flying is pretty high. Whereas if you're doing normal van life, it's like, where do you pe meet people? If you go to van meetups or hang around van crowds, you know what? It's probably 80, 90 percent men. <laughs> so that is one aspect of van life. There's not as many women doing it that I see. So if I would have stuck with just van life people, there's no, I, I think I would have still be single. So, so going to the dance events, I got to meet a lot of very pretty women and yeah, the chances were inevitable. I didn't want it, but it happened. So, uh, so I think if a person is in van life, you have to go on like different, maybe like meetup.com. They have different events. That's a pretty good thing. No, it's not a dating site. They have different, um, they have spiritual groups. They have Tai Chi groups. They have different groups on meetup with similar entrance, like biking. There's another one. They have a biking group that does, uh, hey, we're going to meet up once every two weeks and go on a bike tour or a photograph for the club um, they have a photograph meetup site and you can go on that and different photographers get together and meet once every two weeks or just one week and they go on these little photograph walks so you know what if you're in van life that's one way of meeting other people if you do want to uh, have a relationship the other aspect of van life and dating is the stigma attached to it. And the same thing can be said about Korean girl. She was really questioning what the hell she's getting into. I didn't tell her right away that I lived in a van. We went on a camping trip or two and she just thought, oh yeah, he's got his camper. When are you going to invite me to your place? And after a couple dates I said, yeah, well, this is my place. <laughs> And that threw her off. She's like, what the hell? You have nothing. Well, you, you've, you, you're like, just like homeless. Like, and I think the stigma can be with other people too that don't know or understand our type of life. It's like, you know what? You're homeless. You're living in a van. Like, like, how do you, you got nothing. Like, you're broke. But, that's far from the truth because most van lifers technically should be well off because you know what if you're working or full-time anyways because you got all that money that's not going into rent instead of paying one two thousand dollars a month rent you can save easily ten twenty thousand dollars in a year by not paying rent or a house payment so but not everybody does that. Every, a lot of people, or a lot of us, want to work less and just enjoy life a little bit more. And that's something she couldn't understand. A lot of others don't understand either because everybody is so programmed into society's thinking that, yeah, you have to live this way. You have to live in a house. You have to do this. And no, you know what? No, we don't. There's been lots of ways of living and history has shown that. We've lived in caravans that have moved around like gypsies. We've lived in teepees. Some people in the 
Mexico and Central America lived in caves and stuff. So, you know what? This is just a different lifestyle. That is all. Not all of us fall into that trap that we have to pay a half a million dollar mortgage. And you know what? That's a good thing too because once you sell it, you have all that money. Or you can use it as an investment. So, Anyhow, what I'm trying to get at is that not every Buddy is open to accepting our lifestyle and that's same similar thing when I go out with Korean girl around her friends and that oh where do you live they ask and you know what <laughs> I just tell them Burnaby I don't really say it I, I just I tell them kind of close to where I work there and then I change the subject really quickly because I don't want to embarrass her um, and she doesn't tell anybody either that's her decision if she wants to I'm fine with that if she wants to tell people that I live in a van or live elsewhere I, I don't want her to feel bad with it it's like oh you're going out with a homeless bum blah 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 so I don't need that for her so I kind of keep that private I guess and let her decide it even her kids ask oh where do you live it's like oh yeah down by Burnaby and she never said nothing either so and then see that's two things that I'm looking at not only do I have van life but I'm dating someone for a completely different culture Korean culture South Korean culture they think totally different than us Canadians so it's a double adjustment for us southern Koreans are well off a lot of them are very well off they have a lot of money they come here and they bring all their money they're very uh, studious their system schooling system is very very good a lot of them are very smart and so they're very wealth oriented and also image oriented she's always bugging me about my image my shirts dirty my this and that so for them to know that I live in a van they would be completely frowned on and here's another example uh, some of her friends live in a $1,200 apartment and you know what they don't invite anybody over because the Korean community won't really accept them into the community as much because they're poor they're broke they live in an apartment it's just frowned upon so they are embarrassed to invite people over and for me that's a normal apartment where I used to live but not here not the Korean community you have to have the nice car you have to have the best clothes you have to look good blah 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 so a lot of times she she will pick and choose who she uh, invites over to her place and who I'm even involved to be around when she does have dinner parties or goes out for dinner she's a little hesitant at times I know and you know what it is what it is so I kind of frown myself at those people that they're that shallow where they don't see the person for who they are inside the other aspect would be of hey where do you guys stay together when you sleep together at night and you know what here obviously in the van and she enjoys it not all the time but she totally sometimes she will ask me oh I'm gonna stay I want to stay with you tonight yeah I'm gonna and then and it's like if the van's a mess I gotta scramble to clean it up <laughs> because you know what living a van life it easily and quickly can get cluttered because you're living in a small space and you got limited room and when you got two people in this small place holy shit there's not much room to move around so whoever does this in like a small SUV or other type of unit wow I give you guys credit you know or a camper shell I, uh, there's a guy in Vancouver here Scott he and his girl live in the back of his camper shell and you know what they're big people like like two of me he's a big guy and you know what they do it easily so that's yeah um so do I stay at her place no I do not I'm not comfortable with it and I think she's not with her kids even though her kids are older and growing up 19 21 on their way out and that's our two-year plan we're gonna travel more or find a or uh, 
find a sm bigger unit, like I say, and maybe we'll go li live in a small town and live out of a unit like that, and she'll work a part-time resort job, and maybe I'll find something. I don't know. So not 100%, but we're throwing ideas around like that, a two-year time frame. Uh, so, yeah, we, we enjoy going out on the weekends in the summer and spending my three days off elsewhere. And that's the one aspect of van life. Uh, during the week, I get my own time, alone time, and I enjoy that alone time. And then when I can drop her off at home and she gets her alone time. So that's the nice thing about van life and dating. I can have my own space other than living together in an apartment where, you know what, you're in that apartment. Or full-time nomad life where you guys are stuck in that small space every day. <laughs> yeah, like 24 hours a day pretty much. And that's something that I have to think about and how challenging it will be when we travel and do togetherness when we decide to go that step. So, I don't know. I, I probably didn't do a very good job of van life and dating, but I noticed my time. I did a lot of time um, in videoing, so I probably should cut back because I don't want to like have a 15-20 minute video and waste your guys' time. So anyways, that is just a little tip of the iceberg on fan life and dating, my version. So, we're going to make some soup here. Look at, I got the stock ready. Carrots, bok choy, egg, green onion. I'm going to throw some cucumber on it. An egg, what else? Noodle soup. That's what I add to my noodle soup. Um, hold on. This here is what we got. We got a Korean noodle soup. Baby myeon. So this is noodles with authentic Korean chili sauce. So it's a little bit spicy. And of course, you can buy a bag of these for like $1.99. And it's actually a good brand if you go to the Korean market. Um, this is a good brand. You can go to and buy the other ones at other stores like No Name for like two and a half bucks. But you know what? Not the flavor, not the quality, so I love it. That's my thing. So, anyways, I gotta stop. <laughs> or I can't control myself here. So, I hope I articulated my thoughts good enough. I don't think I do. I never do on camera for some reason. So, in saying that, thanks for watching, guys. Next time, I don't know what we got. Oh, yeah, we'll come back with maybe a little bit of Valentine times after valentine something with korean girl i don't know or just some well yeah yeah i'm blah blah and overthinking things so anyways cheers stay awesome be awesome be kind like all your comments wow you guys are so kind in that and that's for next video too so cheers